In this demo, I'm going to show you a demo of Suite Commerce and the CMS tool called Site Management Tools. To begin with, we need to go make sure that things are configured correctly so that we can easily access it. So we're going to go to Commerce, Websites, Configuration. We're going to click on our website that we're using. And then we need to go look at how to access site management tools using the escape on the keyboard. So we'll go and navigate to integrations and then go to site management tools. And then you'll check use site management tools as an option. And make sure this is not checked. This will disable the ability for you to access site management tools through the website directly. You still need a NetSuite login in order to get to it. So it's still very secure but this is a, a shortcut for easier access. So I normally will keep this unchecked unless there's a specific reason, but you'll need to make sure that use site management tools is checked. Now that we've validated that, we can go over to our website, navigate to the page and click escape on the keyboard. This is taking me to the site management tools and notice it's asking me to log in. So I'm gonna log in. This is logging me into my NetSuite user. And now we're in Site Management Tools, NetSuite CMS tool for Suite Commerce. And this allows you to create drag and drop components for your website. You notice that we're in a view mode right now. I can go into an edit mode, into the publish mode, or even an overview mode where we can see the different categories. These are commerce categories. The different landing pages that we may create. If blog extension is enabled, then you'll have the ability to create blog posts from here. You can look at published content, expired content, just, just a quick overview of the whole site. And not only can you look at the commerce categories within here, but you can look at you know, how many subcategories and the number of items and associate items to commerce categories directly from here too. It's a very versatile tool. So I'm gonna walk you through a handful of elements to give you an overview. To begin with, we need to go into the edit mode so I can show you the drag and drop components. You'll notice that there's these boxes that show up. These different boxes, as soon as I click the plus button here, there's different components that I can drag and drop over. If they're disabled or hidden like this, this just means that the extension is not activated for this specific domain. If you don't have that extension available, then you'll have to download and set up the bundle. As a general rule of thumb, it takes a couple hours to do each of these elements. By default, though, there is a handful of components to drag and drop. If you don't have a component that you wish was there, we can develop custom content types, CCT for short. And those are custom components that we can drag and drop in that are pre-styled and more configurable based on your specific needs. So there is an ability to create additional components beyond what is out of the box. I'm gonna drag and drop a text and as I'm holding it over, we can see that it would be in this location on all pages, this location in all pages, so below the logo, this location in all pages, meaning a, a bread, above the breadcrumbs, and then there's different the facets browse section, so all the product listing pages. If I were to scroll down here, there's also a this page, meaning that it would only show up within this URL at this spot on the website. And there's a handful of ones across the whole theme. We can add additional theme components for you to drag and drop in additional locations. It's a single line of code that we just drop into the theme. So if you want additional areas to drop in, just ask our team that is supporting you along your implementation on adding more of these and whether it's for all pages or a this page or, or whatever you want that to be. By default, the theme has a good amount of them in there, but we can add as many as we want. So let's go ahead and drag and drop a text area to, let's say all pages in the header right up here. Define a name and we're gonna say Cyber Monday Deal 2022. What we're trying to do here is create a header for our promo code or any type of informational purposes. We're gonna say that it's visible on specific dates and times. Let's say you created a sale and this was going into effect at 12 a.m. in the morning on a specific day, you can do that to the time, right? So there's a date and time to make a selection here. Then you can also determine the end date. Let's say that we want it to end at 5 p.m. 
on the 30th. We can add in our Cyber Monday deal 2022. Then I'm going to click Save. And you'll see that that text shows up here. If I go into the view only mode, it'll also show up there. You know, we can add an HTML area and, and style this even further, but for demonstration purposes, we're just gonna use plain text. This is not live on the website. You'll notice in the URL, I'm still within the CMS tool. And if I go to this here, let's go back to the domain and go to the electronics tab. You'll notice that that information is not showing right here. So let's go back into site management tools, go to this review and publish changes, select the component that we just did and select publish. Okay, now let's look at the visibility timeframe and we'll see that it ends at 5 p.m. The visibility is at 2 p.m., which is about two minutes ago because this was PST and I'm in Central. Now I'm going to go back over here and do Control Shift R to refresh the browser. And now we'll see that this deal is showing up here. And as soon as it gets to the end time, it'll automatically get removed. You don't have to do any actions. Once we set our Cyber Monday header, we can see that it's this is our live site now, but let's say that we wanted to just see what it looked like in the future. So I can set the future date past when it's supposed to show, and I can navigate to a commerce category and I can see it's no longer there. Or I could go back to the now button and view it as of a certain day and time, and it's back on there. Another example of something you can do with site management tools is to add things to the header, like a live chat feature that you wanna integrate with. Uh, let's take an example here and I can show you how to do that. I'm going to click F12 and we're going to look at the head section. Just as an example, we can see that there's no information related to the integration. Now we're going to go to Site Management Tools and click on the View button and then on the Edit button. And then we'll see that these edit page settings appears on the edit version. When we're on View, it does not show. So you have to make sure you're on the edit version. I'm on the home page at the moment, but I could do this on any of the pages. And then I can go to page settings. And I'm gonna to go to the advanced tab, which is where you have this add the head section. This is also information that you can put that would exist on maybe the commerce category level or on the specific pages, maybe the metadata, like meta description and meta keywords. A lot of this information exists on either the item record or the commerce category already. It's just another way you can add that information. Let me go to a different commerce category so I can show you what I mean. I'm gonna to go to this outdoor category. I'm gonna click edit, go to edit page settings, and you'll see that this is the name of the category and this is the URL fragment. Right, if I go to metadata, the meta description, keywords, same things that you would see on the commerce category if you were editing it directly from within the ERP. Now, in our use case, in this example, we want to just add to the head, which will apply it to all pages. So I'm going to go to, to make it easier to manage this information, I like to add this information directly on the home page, just to stay consistent. So I'm going to navigate as view, back to the home page, click edit, edit page settings, and go directly to this advanced tab. And I'm gonna just copy and paste the script tag that my live chat said, this is how you integrate it. And then I'm gonna immediately publish this. Click publish, yes, I'll continue. Changes have been published. And now I'm doing a control shift R refresh the browser and you're going to see the live chat button show up here right here this is the integration now this doesn't mean it's integrated with the erp that could be a separate integration it's just integrated with their live chat feature this is talk.io now let's go into the header and let's look for talk scripts so here we go see this information wasn't in the header before so if we want to add header information directly 
to help with an integration, maybe a tracking pixel or something like that, it's very easy to add it into your sweet commerce website via site management tools. It's a good idea to develop good practices for managing your information via site management tools versus the ERP. As a general rule of thumb, even though there's the option to manage categories and items directly from within site management tools, I do think that it's a better practice to manage that information directly out of NetSuite on the item records or on the commerce category level. Now, this is a different approach. You could do it here. I, I think it's a good rule of thumb to just do it directly out of the ERP. Site management tools is required and much easier in certain use cases, such as creating additional landing pages for your website and for creating a new blog. Let's start with creating a new blog post. When I create a new blog post, there's some general information and the specific blog post here as well. I can add a specific blog category if I already have one, maybe add the author and add additional authors as a default, maybe a subtitle. And if I wanted to add an image, let's just add this image in here and the image alt tag for that header. I can say this is related to a topic of food or this is related to health. I could add this information to like a featured article section if I could want to drag and drop a featured article in site management tools onto the home page. I could do that or featured articles in category. I could say that this article applies to that. Blog post on health and beauty plus food. Okay, it's automatically creating a path for that URL. I can add additional meta description, any specific layout as options, or if there's add the head from this page too. So we should have enough information now to click save. And let's go ahead and go to that piece of content. This is our URL blog slash. Now we've navigated to that URL and it's saying that it's a page not found. And this is because we don't have the extension enabled here. If I go back to my extension manager, you'll notice that the active themes and extensions, there's no, there's only this base theme and no extensions active actually. So what we need to do is go to the extensions. And if you don't see it here, that means you need to install the bundle, but I can go click blog and activate. And once we finish the activation process, then we'll be able to see the blog working how it should. Now we've seen an example of how to create a blog post or at least a high level overview. Let's go ahead and create a new landing page. So I'm gonna go into pages, new page, and I'm gonna say always visible. This is gonna be an about us. And then we're gonna look at the meta description, test company. This is the title that shows up. Maybe a meta description and keywords that you may wanna to add to. Then we can go in and add some advanced information should we want to, but let's say this is the URL path that we want, this about us. So it's slash about us. I'm gonna save this. And this creates a new URL, but then we need to add content to it. So let's go ahead and publish this and go to the landing page, landing pages. You can see the URL fragment. Let's go ahead and edit this page. So we've created this landing page here and we could go back here and click preview or edit. I'm going to go ahead and, and show you something in a little trick should you get this issue as well. You can go to edit and see how I, I'm at this URL about us, but this is still the home page. It didn't actually take me to a blank page. One way to get around this is publish the blank page navigate to the URL and then go back into site management tools from here. And this is just a trick if you ever get into this issue. And now you'll see that this is a blank page and we can do some edits here. So now I'm gonna do this plus button and I can drag and drop different components onto this landing page to build an about us. So I'm gonna say, all right, on this page, this is gonna be probably my, a file that just says, you know, this is some certain information, sales section, I can add a link, alt tags, I can add additional sections to this page, either above or below it. 
So I could use this same container for more content or I could add it to other pieces here. And I can just build a landing page using this drag and drop tool. And like I mentioned before, sometimes there's not enough solutions here for you to drop in. And that's when you can ask your project manager at Anchor Group to help you build an extension for a custom content type that is a unique component specific to your business and how you want it to look and feel and the different elements you want to be configurable. So I'm going to go ahead and publish this one little change. Um, I'm just going to do all this. I'm going to say, yep, I'd like to continue. Now I'm going to go back to this URL and go slash about us. And we can see that that new section for my content now shows. In summary, site management tools is a very useful tool as a drag and drop method. It's not the best tool out there for CMS only solutions where that's all they do is a really good CMS. Different softwares have their different strengths here. But this site management tools allows you to bridge the gap for basic things you need to add to the website without reaching out to a developer or if it's not with, built within your core architecture of your item structure or commerce category, or maybe you have one-off scenarios that you want to show this certain piece of information for this specific product detail page and no other product pages. That's the main use case for site management tools and scheduling content. Otherwise, I tend to like to use it the commerce categories and item records to control everything in general. So this should give you a brief overview of how to use site management tools for sweet commerce.